All right now, all right now, everybody, listen to Joseph. Yes. Chapter 15. Chapter 15 is all about tenses. So what what are the the times of the frames of time that we're focusing on? Whether it's the the past, the present, or the future, or another uh, another time frame. <clears throat> now, he, uh, Lewis begins this chapter by not talking specifically about time, but actually <laughs> talking about the use of both fear and confidence. I don't want any says at the beginning of 15 that tortured fear and stupid confidence are both desirable states of mind. And the reason that he begins the chapter on time with that that phrase is that the fear and confidence <coughs> are both responses to the future. So fear is the, uh, what he calls tortured fear is the, um, the, it's the acceptance that the future is going to be something awful and that, that sense of terrible foreboding that you can't escape. And, mm. uh, a terrible future is the tortured fear. And stupid confidence is another perspective on the future. To think that everything will be perfect in the future and that therefore you do not need to worry about anything. And Screwtape says that both of those are useful. Specifically because they force the patient, the human, to focus on the future rather than on another, uh, on another, uh, on another tense of time. So. He says that God wants us to, to focus only on two different time of frames of time, that he wants us to focus on eternity itself and the present. Yeah. Now, it's important to note that when he, when he says eternity, what commonly comes to our mind is a, time, a, a frame of reference in the future, so that eternity is this thing that comes after death. But, we need to remember that eternity is not something that is waiting for us. Jesus doesn't say that you will have a life after this one. He yeah. says that you will have eternal life. Mm -hmm. So that eternal life is including this life. Amen. So we are living in eternity. Yep. Yeah. Amen. Are you taping this? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yes. So when he says that he want, that God wants us to focus on both eternity and the present, what he's saying is that he wants us to either focus on the immediate situation or the larger perspective of everything. So eternity includes the past, the present, and the future. Mm. And the present is obviously the immediate, the right now, the temporal, but also the one section of time that we can actually influence. Right. And for that reason, he says that it is the present that is the point at which time touches eternity. So, um, the, the, the present is the, the section of time in which we're aware of our own choices, because we can't change them in the past and we don't know what choices we will make in the future. And we can't decide upon things in the future because the future will soon become a present in which that decision has to be made. So everything revolves around what we can do now because it's the only section that we can alter. What is so, the real, real year today? Hmm? What year is it today? What year is it? Yeah, today? Neil. Tell me. <laughs> Are we really in 2014? <laughs> <laughs> if it's eternity, then there's no year. Yes, there's a year. Because the eternity has to have a beginning. But if the eternal does not have a beginning, right? Hmm? If the eternal doesn't have a beginning, right? No. Well, there's two eternities. Okay. So we have the eternity that is the eternal eternity, which is God's Whoa. eternity. So the what is the eternal eternity? What I what I mean by that is that it, it it's using the the phrase eternity both in its noun and its adjective form. So it's saying that there is a and never ending, never ending. And that wow. is God. He ne has never had a beginning, he will never have an end, and that 
the, be the concepts of beginning and end have no meaning for him. He's Amen. infinite. Amen. Yes. Versus eternity. Well, right. And so when that. we talk about eternity, it means that they're, uh, uh, from our point of creation onward mm -hmm. is what we're talking about. Okay. Mm. Wow. What? Are you getting that? Yeah. <laughs> We need more cameras. We need, yeah, <laughs> well, we like, it's gonna be like angle. public access right here. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You need a camera inside your brain. <laughs> <laughs> right? Probably have that inserted. Channel yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, you guys didn't know there are yeah. cameras in here? <laughs> An infrared. There already are cameras in here. We gotta see what part of his brain is. Yeah, we need, we need inside his brain, like a, see, like a scanner. Right? Yeah. So, sorry, Jessica, there were cameras in there. <laughs> so the reason that God wants us to focus on the present is obvious, that we, we can only make decisions in the present, and that's why he wants us to focus there. And the reason that he, want, he wants us equally to focus on eternity, the larger perspective on everything, is only so far as it allows us to make decisions in the present. So he wants us to have that large perspective of both the past and the potential future so that we're able to make better decisions in the present. So, uh, on the second page of 15, Screwtape uh, says that because of this, our business is to get them away from the eternal and from the present. So there are two ways of doing this because there are two different tenses that uh, do not include it, that aren't the eternity and aren't the present, that there is the past and the future. And that they can both be used uh, for the purposes of the devils. He says that they can, you can use the past to cause someone to focus uh, on things that have happened and not, not um, be present in the moment and be able to make decisions, but only to be thing what has already happened. But he says that this is of limited value, for they have some real knowledge of the past, and it has a determinate nature, and so to that extent resembles eternity. So the, the best tool for, uh, for distracting humans from eternity and from the present is to get them to live in the future. He says that biological necessity makes all their passions point in that direction already, so that thought about the future inflames both hope and fear. Also, it is unknown to them, so that in making them think about it, we make them think of unrealities. Mm. In a word, the future is, of all things, the thing least like eternity. It is the most completely temporal part of time, for the past is frozen and no longer flows, and the present is all lit up with eternal rays. So, he wants us to focus on the future because the future is the thing that is least like eternity. It's the least real, it's the least definite. Yeah. And for that reason, it can cause both the, uh, the tortured fear and the stupid confidence because that, uh, it's an ambiguity. We can't know the future. And so when we focus on it, we're focusing on something that we, we know absolutely nothing about and we can't know anything about. And so when, when we think about that, we aren't, we aren't focusing on anything really beneficial when we're purely focused on the future, we're only inside of our own minds and imagining what might be. Mm -hmm. And that gives a, a strong opportunity to the demons to, um, to incite both the, the idea that it will be a pleasant experience in the future and that nothing will go wrong, or the opposite, that everything will go wrong and cause both fear or confidence. And both of them lead to to negative repercussions in the present when things don't go according to plan, either to the best of the best or the worst of the worst. When we plan for the worst and good things happen, we don't know what to do with them. Mm. And when we plan for the best and bad things happen, then it destroys everything and we begin to lose hope. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I'll let the, I'm going to let you continue, but I'm going to draw some comments later. Mm -hmm. So, he wants us to focus on the future, the very core of temporality. Because, here he explains that nearly all vices are rooted in the future. Because when you're, fo as I said, when you're focusing on the future, you're focusing on something that is unreal. So that 
it gives the demons the opportunity to manipulate it because it's inside your mind rather than something that exists. So, um, now before he said, he said that, um, that it's easy to get them to focus on the future because bio, a, a, quote, biological necessity makes all their passions point in that direction. So, <coughs> well that, that phrase means, it's fairly simple, it's just that the, um, the biological drives are always pointing towards something that we can achieve, so it's something that's always in the future. If we're hungry, it's to go and find food, which is in the future. If the, all of the, the desires of the body involve something that can be achieved in the future rather than something that's in the present. And for that reason, sin only exists, uh, sin exists in the present because the, it's the, the taking of something that is in the future that may not, um, may it perhaps should not be ours. So he says that when we do sin, that, that if there's any pleasure in it, that it's that the sin is already past, because the sin was in the present, whereas um, what we were experiencing was to be. The sin was the decision to do something rather than the actual yes. doing of it. Yes. So when the the present pleasure arrives, it says the sin, which alone interests the demons, is already over. Uh, the pleasure is just the part of the process which we regret and would exclude if we could do so without losing the sin. It is the part contributed by the enemy and therefore experienced in the present. The sin, which is our contribution, looked forward. So, the sin was the decision in the present for something in the future. And because sin is mainly based around the... Um, it's largely based around the needs of the body. It's the manipulations of those desires for, of, for a variety of things. Um, and it's when the demons manipulate those and cause us to try to uh, satisfy our own needs outside of the will of God that that is sin. So when we're looking toward the future to grab onto something, then that's the only place that we can actually experience sin because we can't experience sin in the present because the decisions that force the situation in the present were made in the past. So whenever you are tempted to think into the future, that's when the temptations for sin will arise. Mm -hmm. And when you're focused on the present, then you can't be tempted because sin is primarily concerned with what will happen in the future. Amen. <laughs> So, but he also makes the admonition that the, or the admission that that the future is something that God also wants us to be concerned with. He doesn't want us to be completely in the present, as I, as he said that he wants us to focus on both eternity and the present. But he wants us to think of the future just so much as is necessary for now, planning the acts of justice or charity, which will probably be their duty to. The duty of planning the morrow's work is today's duty. Though its material is bar borrowed from the future, the duty, like all duties, is in the present. He does not want men to give the future of their hearts to place their treasure in it. We do. His ideal is a man who, having worked all day for the good of posterity, if that is his vocation, washes his mind of the whole subject, commits the issue to heaven, and returns at once to the patience or gratitude demanded by the moment that is passing over. But we want a man hag-ridden by the future, haunted by visions of an imminent heaven or hell upon earth, ready to break the enemy's commands in the present, if by so doing we can make him think he will attain the one or avert the other. Dependent for his faith on the success or failure of schemes whose end he will never live to see. We want a whole race perpetually in pursuit of the rainbow's end, never honest, nor kind, nor happy now, but always using as mere fuel wherewith to heat the altar of the future, every real gift which is offered them in the present. Wow. They want us to take all the enjoyment and all the all the real things of the present and use them only so that we can achieve something in the future. And we, we see so much of that in our um, 
very westernized idea of capitalism to try to drive forward and gain more income and invest and constantly be looking toward the future. And we, we it's easy to begin to forget that we're supposed to enjoy things in the present. And that's exactly what the demons want us to do when we're focusing on the future, is to stop enjoying anything now, but to only use it for the future. Because the future, as I said, is the only place in which sin is, can occur. So they don't want us to enjoy anything now because they want us to, to reach out for something in the future to enjoy. So, he says that he wants us to be filled either with anxiety or hope, and that it doesn't matter which. Because uh, if they're filled with hope, it is only piling up more disappointment. disappointment. Whereas if they're filled with anxiety, then they're going to be controlled by fear and unable to, uh, to act outside of their fear and be able to um, to do what God calls them to do because they're concerned with what might happen and how they can change it rather than concerned with the one who knows what will happen and what he wants them to do. So the situation that um, is the inverse of that, the what, what is really desired by God for us to do, he, uh, Screw Tape explains that it is the praying for the virtues wherewith to meet the future, and meanwhile concerning himself with the present, because there and there alone all duty, all grace, all knowledge, and all pleasure dwell. And in this state, it is very undesirable and should be attacked at once. So we, we have to be concerned with the future only so far as it affects our duty now and what we can choose to do now. <coughs> What do we think about that? What part do you want? We just said, explain that a little bit more. Okay, so, he wants us to, to focus on the future, God wants us to focus both on the future and the past, but only so much as it affects the present. So if we understand what decisions we made in the past and what they caused, then it allows us to make better decisions now. Okay. And if we think of the future, we're only thinking of what what could be happening mm -hmm. so that we can react to them properly. We use, we use the past and the future to help us understand the, the present. Pre right. right, rather than so focusing. Use them as tools, not as the focus. Mm -hmm. Right, because if the focus is the future, then you're only concerning yourself with something that doesn't really yeah, exist. You, and never really will exist. Exactly. And, and never exist is right. it's just in your mind. And so it's very easy to pray for <clears throat> manipulation of demons because it doesn't exist at all. And if we're focusing on the past, then it, there's nothing that can be done about that because that, uh, that's already been done. Yeah, exactly. So we're not making any decisions about it, we're just looking at it. When you guys think about that, like, what, like think about your lives. And how, how does this kind of stuff apply to your lives? Like past versus future versus now. Uh, I think that uh, obviously there's some things in my life that I'm not too proud of that I think about sometimes and it kind of brings me down. But, uh, I, don't know, I also like think about things I've learned in the past to help me like mm -hmm. do a certain job that I have to accomplish or something like that. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, it could be a, a pretty bad thing if you like you let your mind wander. Mm -hmm. negative things. Right. If you're, you're not able to do something about it now, what's the point? Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's, it's a history. Mm -hmm. very easy to focus on the past and then regret the mistakes of the past and be constantly dwelling on that rather yeah. than yeah. how it can affect you yeah. now. That's the demons want you to do. Yeah. Right. Because that, the, and the, we need to combat that with the fact that we've already been forgiven for that. We don't need to worry about what we've done in the past unless it affects the now. Right. Now you're talking about um, unrealities. On uh, page 676, this reminds me uh, of an episode of uh, Farsco. I watched recently, and basically John Crichton, uh, I have the description right here. While Crichton is out explaining how warm and, e and easy to he he's pulled inside. Then he finds himself face to face with a mysterious being who warns 
Creighton of the dangers of war, warful navigation. It determines that Creighton may have this guy because of what he knows. So what he experienced in the past would lead to consequences of the future, how he came aboard this the Moya ship and came to know the crew and, you know, doubtful, uh, uh, I guess, about the relationship between Crane and Aaron, you know, his girlfriend in the show. So it's like, okay, you go in the past, you, you could have doubts about the future, but you could learn from your past too. Uh, hopefully not end up like John Crichton, but I don't know. Right, so both can be used and you need to be careful what what your focus mm -hmm. is. That's the main thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you can also be guilty of focusing too much on the future. Right. And thinking yeah. about, uh, and ignoring what's happening now. And the crazy thing about the future is that it never quite comes. It's always the future, it's always there. You may get closer to it, but everything you're doing is just pushing you towards another future. Right. And it will never be how you imagine. Right. Mm -hmm. For me, it's worrying about my kids' health mm -hmm. in the future, big time. You know, you see commercials on the TV, and the kids are looking at reading in the newspaper, Probably the day about a six-year-old kid that got stabbed by some crazy guy in Brooklyn. It's hard for me not to be concerned about that, you know. But at the same time, it's one of those really right. Yeah, there's nothing you can do about that. It's pretty scary. But at the same time, when we're at the park, I can make sure to keep them close to me just in case. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's the situation in which you could be worrying about what could happen in the future, or you could only know what might happen so that you can allow it to affect your behavior now. In the past, a guy beat up an 11-year-old boy picking on his 9-year-old autistic son. How does that uh, have a bearing on the now? Well, I didn't say that everything <laughs> has a bearing on the now. All I said was that it can be used. So not, not everything that's happened in your past can, can actually affect what you do in the present. Uh, it, well, you can choose to let it affect it. Right. And you can choose to let it right. affect it positively or negatively. But it's not, you can't, I wouldn't, focusing on everything in the past is obviously not going to be beneficial. And when you focus to that extent and try to think about how you can use it <coughs> and you're intent on finding a way, that, that's still the distortion of the, the, pre, the focus on the past, that you're still concerned with what you can get out of it. And it's, it's a subtle manipulation of the same basic idea that you're thinking too much about it. Mm -hmm. That if it if something in the past really affects the now and allows you to make a better decision, you'll know instantly. Yeah. That's cool. I was just thinking of a new story. And so does it come does it come with like tools to like not have your mind go there? Um or like does he say like oh, well, humans do this? Well they go over so tools to make your mind go there. <laughs> so you do the opposite. Yes. What is the opposite? <laughs> well, Meditation. So, That's good. He, he says that they want people to be constantly in pursuit of the rainbows and to never never be honest now, never be kind now, never happy, but always using it as fuel to keep the altar of the future. Okay. So, he, so the, honest, the opposite of that, yes, to, you're supposed to do your duty now in ignoring what might happen in the future. <laughs> because, as I said, the, the future is a tool for sin because that when you create a reality that could happen, that you could alter by disobeying the commands that you have in the present. Mm -hmm. Then it makes it easy to sin because you think that it will make things better in the future and that you somehow know more than God. Mm -hmm. What about setting goals? Would that be considered? Goals uh, are good. Well, setting goals, he says that it's only, it only, um, it's <laughs> the setting of the goals is the present activity. So you're thinking about the future, but the setting of the goals is a now thing. So you're deciding now that you will do something in the future. So when, you, when you set a goal, you, it means you're doing something right now to make something happen in the future. It's yes. still a present activity. Even though you're, you're thinking about the future, but you're using it to benefit the present. It's not so much a focus on the future as it is. Right, exactly. Well, and uh, we have to remember that both the past and the future bleed into each other in the present. So you can't... There's, there's a fine, there's not any fine lines that you can divide between thinking of the present only and thinking of the past only and thinking of the future only because that they're all interconnected. So it's not so much a matter of worrying whether you're thinking too much about the future, but just thinking about the present.
So if you're concerned with the present, then you'll only think about the future and the past so much as it matters. I think the whole point of it well, is should we to, be not get, not to get drugged down by either the past yeah. or the future. Yes. Yeah. Because it, you know, the the present right now. This is where we're doing God's work. This is where we are. This is where we're following what He wants us to do. Mm -hmm. And if we're allowing our past or our possible future mm -hmm. to take that away from us, that's taking us away from what God's wanting us to do yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, things like the negative things. Not for your mind. Not, not <laughs> how we, uh, think they're going to turn exactly. out. Exactly. We have no idea of the future. And the past, you can't do anything about it now. Yeah. So there's no need to let it have this huge, debilitating weight on your present. Well, and Jesus was a perfect example of this, this duality of both living in the present, but also having the perspective of eternity. Yeah. So when, when he would go and preach to different people, he would use you would use all these references from scripture which is drawing from the past mm -hmm. and then in the garden he was crying that may this cup be taken from me that's in the future mm -hmm. but he proves that all this matters in the present by his sacrifice on the cross so he was concerned only so much as it mattered now mm -hmm. and every time he talks about the past and uh, when he uses scripture references he's always talking about what the people can do now and when he talks about the future, when uh, in the sections when he um, prophesies about the the kingdom of God, he's talking about what the disciples should prepare for now. Mm -hmm. And when he's asking that the, if the cup may be taken from him shortly after that, he knows that he has to take it, so he takes that duty now. Mm -hmm. Everything about Jesus is focusing on the now, but it Amen. encapsulates eternity into that now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Leave it to Jesus. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> He's always a great example. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, even when he's the, the seven churches, you know, and he tells them that this was going to happen to you, you can fix it now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. <clears throat> so, um, one last thing before we move to chapter 16. That at the end of 15, he talks about the idea of complacency as a tool for um, for drawing us out of the present. The idea that we we're too satisfied, but um, but the the idea of complacency is just a, a distortion that we shouldn't be satisfied with the now. So that's the that is true, that we, we should always be desiring more, but that doesn't mean that we should focus on the more. So again, mm -hmm. it's just focusing on the now, and it can be, yeah, I don't want to talk about it. no. it, it's a, it's a you know, very it's difficult struggle, and you have to do it like day by day. It's not like time and a place for it, like, you don't want to be like, focus on that stuff when you're like, hanging out with your family, you know, yes. you always want to be focused on them, right. so you can enjoy the moment. Wasn't there a Bible, uh, Bible verse that uh, explained that, in essence? Uh, let the day's troubles be sufficient. Yes, yeah, it's in Matthew. Mm -hmm. We've got a Bible. Do not worry about the well, future for today. I don't, want, I don't know where it is, though. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Kind of what Steve was reading earlier. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> Even if it in and of itself is not that bad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ever doubt anything? Are you worried about anything? Just the look toil? <laughs> no. Your answer is right there. Yes, Susan. Yes, Susan. Come on, then. Right? <laughs> That's the problem. Breaking, <laughs> 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 David. <laughs> Enjoy your life. Enjoy your life. Are you walking home? No, I'm going to walk home. Carol, how long, Carol? She's not walking home. He's sneaking, can you catch? You're leaving too? Oh. Bye bye. Yeah. That's exciting. Yes. What time is it? Who's going to the concert? Come on, guys. Are you going? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, Chad. Are you going to the concert? I 
Really? I go on vacation on Wednesday, so I'm going to come in on Sunday. So it's just that day. I'll have the money for you um, on Monday. Yeah, it's okay. Or do you want to get it? It's already bought. Oh, you already bought it? Okay. Yeah, I, I, I have the money. Wait, I, I didn't see how you thought I was going. Did you, did you tell him I was going? Oh, well, yeah. Uh, I, I was like, what concert? I was going to say, how did you do that? Spirit West Coast. Coast. Yeah, I have. It's Just 20, going. right? You were telling me Spirit 20, right? Spirit West Coast? Yeah. yeah. Where's that at? Concord? Uh, Concord. 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 One, yeah, only one day, 20, Sunday. June 22nd. Sunday. June 22nd? June 22nd? No, no, no. Yeah, June 22nd. Sunday, but the Sunday after. Okay. No, Sunday, Sunday, early, Sunday. Right? I think <laughs> doors open at 1.30. Yeah, we need to be there early. I want to be there. Like at the church. Are we tailgating? That sounds like fun. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah it is. Yeah. I've tailgated at Christian Concert before. It's cool. I heard, I heard it was going. Yeah, it's a pretty good playlist. It's what? Pretty good playlist. Yeah, um, Jeremy Camp, Cutlass, Newsboys, Plum. 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 Oh, yeah. more yeah. 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 Oh. Is Lecrae going to be there? Give me that. Lecrae? Lecrae? Yeah. Yeah. My car seat's eight. Oh, no, maybe. Uh, Who's? I think the rapper guy's been there. I tried to sit in the trunk once in the car. You ever go to Lecrae? I got like three. I think the rapper, any rapper. Are you going? Yeah, yeah. Probably that car. I'm saving up for other stuff. Yeah. I don't know guy to be there. Oh, yeah. Huh? So uh, I was going to say, I was going to say, I was going to say, Josh, wait, is Josh Norman? No. No, Josh, Josh Norman. Durbin, Durbin, Josh Durbin, but he's going to say, it's, um, it's someone, it's someone, like, <laughs> <laughs> who's Josh Norman again? He's that opera guy singer. Oh, never mind. You made me go. No, it's not that guy. He wants cheese. I think, uh, yeah, I'll take some of that pizza. I know. I think I got the American Island. I have seven tickets. Seven tickets. It's like, so, so, have a great week. Enjoy your life. Josh something. Yeah. It is Josh something, right? Yes. I should have bought a lot of tickets. Because I posted it a long time ago. Nobody's like, I'm just going to buy seven tickets. It wasn't locked in there. Who's going? It's going. Oh my god. Let's go. Take him. Take him away. Did you make him? Did you make him? I didn't know what those were. I thought they were. Uh, oh, there's plates. That feels good. Yeah, there's plates. Just shove it in your mouth. Shove it in there. Put it in her pocket. I don't know if I made them, but I definitely just ate them. Okay, so no one. No one this is. You can leave it in the plate. I'm going to play it. I'm going to play it. Church going, 
the next best thing is to send him all over the neighborhood looking for the church that suits him mm. until he becomes a taster or a connoisseur of church. Church hopper. That's what I wrote. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, church hopper. Yeah. Hey, church hopper bad. That's what I, used to, I used to do. That's what my friends told me to do to find a, a Christian guy. Well, that's silly. Mm -hmm. Look, you need to, you know, expand your horizons. Yeah. Like, like. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Vanessa. Well, you gotta see what, yeah, what's out there in the big pond. Anyways. Uh -huh. It's just oh. random. It's just random. <laughs> it makes no sense. This is great. So, uh, right, so there, uh, there's a difference between looking for another church and church uh, hopping, or as Jessica put it, or becoming a, a connoisseur of churches because the difference is that you are, instead of looking for a church for the, uh, for doctrinal reasons, that you, you don't agree with some of the basic values of the church and you're searching for another one, but it, the, it's a, a variety of superficial things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ugh, these, these pews are just too hard. Superficial? Yes. So later in the chapter, he says that uh, all the purely indifferent things, candles and clothes and whatnot, are an admirable ground for our activities. Uh, it isn't the doctrines on which we should chiefly depend for producing mouths. The real fun is in working at hatred between those who say mass and those who say holy communion. When neither party could possibly state the difference between, say, Hooker's doctrine and Thomas Aquinas's, in any form that would water for five minutes. She's like, I don't even understand what he just said. Well, Thomas Aquinas um, was a philosopher. What he's saying is that, oh. he, that focusing on the, the little superficial aspects of a yeah. church, so what type of music they play, what, okay. what um, type of people go there, what, um, what do they dress what like? Do, yes, what do they dress like? What, what, sorts okay. of, what sort of accent does the pastor have? All, Rather all than the things that are not important. the Lord is Right. Well, you all in the right the, direction, right from the get-go. Well, all the all the little um, idiosyncrasies right? of a church oh. that may not really matter, rather than focusing on the um, the truly important aspects. Like, well, right, the doctrine, the real core of the church. What does the church believe, rather than what does the church look like? Yes. Which are very different. Yes. So he wants us to focus on the superficial. Like aspects. when your grandma says she's not going to go to your church because there's too many guitars on stage? Yes. Well, 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 well uh, put a lot of bugles up there. Okay, my grandma <laughs> said that. Come on, grandma. Come on, So, and the reason for that is that when you're looking for a church for doctrinal issues, you're focusing on how it benefits you and how you can benefit the church that you're going to attend, rather than when you're looking at the, the physical idiosyncrasies and aspects of the church that don't really matter, the superficial parts, then you're becoming, then you're not looking for it for how it really benefits you uh, in the long run, but more uh, in a judgmental sense. So the former is uh, concerned with how you can uh, be uh, and un more in unity with the church because you're concerned with what um, what divides you doctrinally with the church you were previously in and how you can be more united with your future church whereas the latter looking at the physical aspects is a dividing factor what what distances you from everyone else and when you're focusing on the small things that distance you from everyone else you'll find more of them than if you're focusing on doctrine because there are very many different uh, different flavors of churches, but many of them have the same core doctrine. Mm -hmm. And that is the reason why they want us to focus on the physical aspects, is because it divides the church, that it, the church stops mm -hmm. becoming one body yep. Yep. and starts becoming, as he says, a variety of different factions, mm -hmm. that each of these uh, core different groups that are opposed to each other, rather than being Christian, United Christian churches, they're rather these... Yeah the Baptists versus the Presbyterians and global domination rather than like how we can actually help the people. Or like a church that's in a really like expensive area of like housing and it's basically people that go there and have a lot of money compared to a church that's like, I don't know, like 
the name of Crossroads, is that where it's like a mix? You mean Saratoga Federated versus yeah. Crossroads? Or what's the name? Like, you go to a church like that, you just know that, like, <laughs> you just, I don't know, for me, like, I don't feel, like, comfortable because of that presence there. But I feel like the, the church should be mixed, you know? Well, I, it does depend on the area. I think yeah. that it can be a very good thing to have a church and then a very wealthy area, which is a good thing for a church to be in a very poor area, just to simply be able to reach those types of people with a message that they might, may not yeah. have been able to it's have true. in a church that is mixed. Because some people, some rich may not want to be among the poor, and some poor may not be want to be among the rich, so you have to accommodate those. Yeah. That's and that, um, that actually... Yeah. And you know what, they're, I mean, Westgate, they're, they're, they're likely pastors a good dude. Um, it, 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 it sends out the right message, but there's a lot of people who jump ship from here to go there. Just to be part of that. It's where all the cool kids go. Yeah, just right. to be part of that environment, you know. It's where all the hype's at. And mm -hmm. I think. Ship real what? For now. And all the hype's here. Yeah. That's what I say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But that's not what Jesus wanted. No. No hype. No hype. No hype. No hype. But I don't. I don't. I don't but you didn't want it to be. I don't knock Westgate for that because they're they're bringing people in and they're giving them the right message. Right. Yeah, but they just know how to market. I think you know? Westgate, I mean, it's appealing because they have all these colors everywhere and like cool like you know, guitarist dude like shredding like you know. Like, that's what I think of that place like I don't know like from being like judgmental, but when I went in there, like almost seemed like it didn't. Look, it almost seemed like it wasn't a church when I first went there. It looks like a concert. Like, but see, here's <laughs> the weird. thing though: does that yeah. take away or add to your worship experience? For some people, it gives some gives them yeah. something up. It enhances think, that. Yeah, it appeals to obviously it appeals to a lot of people because a lot of people go there. And right. That's cool. You know? If you're not comfortable there, then well, the chairs weren't that comfortable. <laughs> but I mean, no, but we got, got theater. Uh, got he's chairs, not talking about that, physical comfort. Lean back. <laughs> not <laughs> you can lift the uh, middle. I think the chairs at Crossroads are awesome. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't oh, think wait. I don't think those. You guys weren't here when the pews were here. It's because we're there. I was. Oh, James, you were. I used to roll under the pews when I was short enough. Chairs here in Crossroads are good, and it's because we're here. <laughs> you know, we first got these chairs. Some of the chairs, because of the slant, they have the like little plastic underneath that's been sawed off so that it stays in the slant. When we first got them, they would move the chairs around every now and then. And the best was if you would move one of those chairs to where it wasn't, or move one of the regular chairs to the slant, and <laughs> you'd see people going sliding forward in the service. <laughs> good times. I didn't do that, because that'd be terrible. Yeah. Stay in your seat. Okay. I think it's it's, it's it's I think it's kind of cool to be in a church with that's not all pretty and all hyped up. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what Jesus where Jesus would be. It, it doesn't have to be a monster truck rally, you know. Doesn't have to. Doesn't be. have to be. You have but, a I but I think what we're talking about here is that focusing on the um, core of yes. the of the what we're learning at the church. Really matter, yes. Yeah. Rather than the super yeah, no matter what it looks like or how flashy it is or how flashy yeah. it not it is, like personally yourself, you're focusing on the core and everything else shouldn't matter. So, exactly. Yeah. It's, a, it's about your heart. I mean, yeah. going to church is is part of your relationship with God. It does matter. And if it and if it's in any way taking away from that, then that's what you need to be aware of. Yeah, and if you feel like you would uh, preferably go to a certain church because you would feel more connected to the message there, you should do that. Right. Uh, right. Wrong with that, you know. So I think that's where Satan's winning with the American church. You know? mm -hmm. I mean, we're people laugh at us because there's so much division amongst them. Yeah. You know, the, the it doesn't exist. You know? Like if I were to go and get a job in Tennessee and tell them, you know, what, what, what my background is, they would look at me like I'm some crazy liberal hippie because you I'm mean, a non-denominational. You know? So you ain't Baptist. You ain't Christian. I think yeah, I think Satan's winning on that. That's what the American church is being a kind of joke. You know. <laughs> Yeah. Catholics are different and, and, and I always bring this up, you know, the, the, the main spokesperson for Christianity in America is the Westboro Baptist Church. Oh, man. You know what I mean? That's so sad. Yeah. Right? And, it, and, then, and then someone comes and says, hey, you're a Christian, do you believe what they believe? That's what I saw on Fox News last night. Yeah, how you got Mormons, which is like a hybrid. <laughs> yeah. And you got well, so to you. When we're, when we're talking about denominations, it's important to remember that some of the dividing lines for denominations are very important doctrinally. There are some significant differences, but the, the reason that, um, that Lewis states so clearly that we're not supposed to jump from church to church is that 
we don't tend to focus on those deep issues. So even though we may be saying we're a Baptist or a Presbyterian, we're not really concerned with what that really means, but rather with the, what the label yeah, says to the absolutely. population. So what do we look like rather than what we are? Yeah. One thing that I do, I go to my friend's church, and it's a Baptist church, and like, I go there sometimes, he's a good friend of mine, and like, when I hear their message, it's like I'm hearing this message, it's like mm -hmm. the same message, like I don't see the difference, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, at all. Like, the messages are clearly the same. I mean, like... Our pastor is a Baptist, isn't huh? it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, not as Baptist. Oh, is it? Yeah, and there you go. <laughs> yes. Maybe they know each other. <laughs> I think they do know each other, actually. So, he probably knows everything. Yeah, yeah. What he's saying here is that when you're when you're looking at the dividing lines, you need to have a deeper understanding of what those lines mean before you go and say anything about it. Because if you go and ask the average person of any of these denominations what the denomination means, they'll say a variety of little superficial things about the church that they they don't do things this way. They don't have they don't have these they don't use projection screens or they don't play this type of music. And those aren't the things, again, that really matter. And there, are, yeah. there might be doctrine that that's based on, that it's stemmed from. The superficial aspects may be just, for some people, an extension of the doctrine, but it isn't the core of what matters. Right, and that's where Satan tries to get us. He try, you know, when people go church hopping, you're, think about any relationship with someone. If you, if you are just spending a little bit of time with them here and there, never really getting to know them, then you may make comments about this person that have no bearing because you don't really know the person. You don't have a deep understanding of their relationship. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's the same it's thing with the things. church. Right, yeah. right. So you, know, you, go to, you go to one Baptist service and they happen to discuss a topic that you're really against and all of a sudden you're like, this church believes this and does this and you've never gotten to know their real right. meaning yeah. behind it. Yeah, I actually... Uh, First church that I went to before here, I went to I went there for a good like a year and a half. So like I had like a solid like feeling and understanding of that church, and then I decided to come here. This is the second church that I've pretty much already been to, which has been a little over a year too. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's pretty cool, I guess. But you definitely want to like give give someone a chance, I guess, or give a church right. a chance, you know. Well, like, give an e yeah. make an effort to understand what's going on versus just going off of yeah, yeah. any little thing that might set you off. Exactly. And when you're, you're judging a church for the superficial aspects, you're ignoring um, the, the true essence of one of the main tenets of being a, a Christian in the church is mm -hmm. humility. It's not, not the pride of saying that you do this physical, um, you have this physical thing wrong with what you're doing that you need to change that, but rather what's the, um, what is at the core of your behavior. So Paul says explicitly in, in his letter to the Romans in uh, chapter 14, he says that as for one who is weak in faith, welcome him, but not quarrel over opinions. One person believes that he may eat anything while the weak person eats only vegetables. Let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains, and let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats, for God has welcomed him. Why? Uh, who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It is before his own master that he stands or falls. Amen. <clears throat> and he will be upheld for the Lord is able to make him stand. Mm -hmm. One person esteems one day better as better than another, while another esteems all days are alike. Mm -hmm. Paul knows this very well, the, <clears throat> the difference between ser a service on Saturday or a service on Sunday. This is exactly what Paul in... Um, and the early church, first century, was saying that if one person esteems one day is better than another, while another person esteems all day like each one may, should be fully convinced in his own mind. <clears throat> the one who observes the day observes it in honor of the Lord. The one who eats, eats in honor of the Lord, since he gives thanks to God, while the one who abstains, abstains in honor of the Lord and gives, gives thanks to God. For none of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, when it, and whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. Mm -hmm. For to this end Christ died and lived again, that he might be the Lord of both the dead and of the living. Mm -hmm. Why do you pass judgment on your brother? Or why do you despise your brother? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every enemy shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then we will each have to give an account of himself to God. To God. Mm -hmm. 
Therefore, let no one, not one of us pass judgment on another, one another any longer, but rather decide never to put a stumbling block or a hindrance in the way of the brother. Yeah. I know and am persuaded in the Lord Jesus that nothing is unclean in itself, but it is unclean for anyone who thinks it unclean. Mm -hmm. Or if your brother is grieved by what you eat, you are no longer walking in love. Mm -hmm. But what you, by what you eat, you do not destroy the one for whom Christ died. So do not let what you regard as good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness and peace and joy. Amen. Mm -hmm. yes. So these small superficial differences, yes. we need to, to consider the, what Paul says, calls the weaker brother, those who think that one thing is, one physical thing is better mm -hmm. than another, to, mm -hmm. to, uh -huh, to be, eat kosher or to not eat kosher, that they, those, who, those who do believe that everything is permissible but not everything is beneficial, as Paul said, should, uh, um, because of their freedom, not be willing to put a stumbling block in the way of the person who believes that they should only eat one thing, or that one day is better than another. So we need to accommodate for the differences and to, um, to have the humility to respect the beliefs of those yeah. who believe that we should abstain from things. Um, so if, if, as Jessica said, that if there's someone who believes that you shouldn't have guitars in church, then in some cases you may want to abstain yeah. from having it yeah. in church simply so that you can benefit that yep. person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So we are all free. All these things don't ultimately matter, but if someone yeah. believes that they yeah. matter, as Paul says, then it does. Yeah. So for one who believes that something is unclean for them, it is unclean. Yeah. Sacrifice. If you believe something is sin and you do it, then it is sin, whether it was sin or not. In the ultimate sense, it was sin for you to do something that you thought was wrong. Right. If it goes against what, you, what your relationship with God is, then yes. it is sin, regardless of whether it's good or bad. Verses. Verses. Well, that's like deep. That's like, I feel like how that, do you I make like sense a, <laughs> That could be like misused. Like a person, like let's say his relationship with God, it's, it's okay to like do drugs. As God said, my my personal relationship with God says it's okay to do drugs. Right. And you just do drugs. Like, I, I don't think God would say that. I think well, we're on more on the. Some people are like that. Like, yeah. No, no. Well, yeah, right. So the <clears throat> the purpose of that that section was abstinence, so not doing something. I feel like there's like rules, like, you know, like, we should not do what you should do. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I see what you're saying. You're, you're kind of doing like the, the flip side of it. Like, if yeah. we're talking about abstaining from something, isn't there an obvious, well, I do things, yeah. so what am I doing that would be considered a sin? Yeah. yeah. Or, or what would be allowable yeah. because yeah. of my relationship with God. Yeah. Right, well, he says, as Paul says that everything is permissible, but yeah. not everything is beneficial. So you can go to someone and say that I don't believe that what you're doing is beneficial. Yeah. Not that it's necessarily wrong for them to do it, but that you don't think that it's helping them achieve a greater communion with God by doing that. Okay. That's a first Corinthians ten point three. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. So all, everything that we need to do is to edify another yes. person. Yeah. So I, I don't know if drugs would ever edify yeah. the group. <laughs> 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 well, we no, I know, I know, but, but I mean, it's a silly example, but it's still true. What are you trying to promote, Do you have some? Oh, Give me some. Well, and, then, and then there is a, <laughs> uh, so a, no, huh? there is a time and place for things. Yeah. Throw it away. There is a time for all things, as Solomon said. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about drugs, what you're saying is that there, there are... Um, chemically altering your body. So when you're when you're talking about them in a negative sense, but what about in a hospital? Mm -hmm. right. You're saying that it's a very no. situational thing. Yeah, so yeah, I agree for each like, person pain, in each situation you, know. you need to address it differently. Yeah, yeah. If you, yeah, if you're in pain and like the drugs are gonna help you then like God made the drugs to help you. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. But there even are there are even people, I, I've grown up with them, who think that taking certain good drugs are still bad for you, and a terrible thing, that, and they're a sin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Uh, people that think only have natural like, dates. I don't know. So then, in that case, you may have, you may want something. you may desire to accommodate them for the sake of their soul. You don't want them to believe yeah, that you're sinning. Kind of talking to me like, well, what you're thinking is untrue. You should like not do that. Um, well, maybe not to address it that bluntly, unless yeah, yeah. Uh, unless lovingly, you know, yeah. lovingly, yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, good, it's a good thing to think about. Right. If, if we're abstaining from something because it's bad for us, we, we do things because they're good for us. And right. So therefore, what are the good things? Mm -hmm. Just thinking about it. Yeah, so we have to come up with like a game plan of good things to present to them. Mm -hmm. and see if they'll follow. Right. Well, and everything is supposed to be for edification. So if you think right. that what you can say can edify someone, and you yeah. that you're what does edification mean? Like, what's the what? How you can benefit them? Make, make someone better. Right. Strengthen them. Good also. Help them. Okay. Yeah. Like it comes from like editing. Like you're editing. taking uh, taking something out to make it better. Edification. Oh, so like you're that. adding or taking away whatever it is to just if the focus is to help the other. Right. So as long as you have that mindset, then there is very little that can go wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you don't have sin nature, you know. Yeah, I got it. Well, I said very little. Yeah, there are some things that can still go wrong. <laughs> I got a guy here who just loves to play the holier than thou card. Not in this group. He comes to this church. And talk about the shows that I watch and all that, like The Sopranos and Wire and all that kind of stuff. And, mm. Oh, how could you watch that stuff and this and that? I would never. I don't watch R rated stuff. <laughs> What's wrong with it? It's not holy, this and that. Like, mm -hmm. Dude, <laughs> stop. Yeah, his well, purpose is to edify you. Right, his is to judge you yeah. and to yeah, 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 and to yeah. make you feel Com guilty about comparing it. and yes. versus you know. like, hey, let's go over and watch some family wholesome <laughs> classics. Hallmark. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's there's a very important thing to be taken from that is that that for him it may be very much a sin right. to watch any R-rated movie for any reason whatsoever, and the the. Um, the problem with what he's doing is not that he believes that it's wrong for him, but that he believes it's wrong for everyone. Mm. Right. Yeah. right. And so we need to remember that things that are sin for you may not be a sin for the next person. Mm. Right. Yeah, that's a, that's a but at the same time, you you can't use you can't use that. Well, that's not my sin, yeah. and then do it anyways, even if you right. know that it's not good for you. Well, and that's why Jesus and Paul and Peter all address very big definite sins in the churches right. yeah, made never, this, made statutes uh, all um, very early in the construction of the church that you should abstain from food sacrificed idols that you yeah. should avoid sexual immorality all these things that these are very specific definite mm -hmm. things so they do address sins that are for everybody mm -hmm. that you can point to and say that this is what it says in the bible and that you need to um, to reconcile that with your own behavior, or, rather than saying that it is it is me who is passing judgment on you. Well, if people, I'll be like, well, I haven't played the game Contra, and then the, the people will say, well, that's a sin. You want to play it? I'm like, okay. Yeah. Really? Play Contra. Well, yeah. Don't play. get a chance to play it. Whatever. They may just be sarcastic. Too. I think they're being sarcastic. I remember I had a pastor once tell me that he never told a lie in his life. I was just like, oh, <laughs> Maybe he's just joking. I looked straight through that, dude. <laughs> like, I was just like, no. that was, that, I swear that's a true story. He was taking me, I, I, I was going to like a private school uh, as, a, as a freshman. It's like a Christian school, so I got in a lot of trouble. And we were on the way there, and he was taking me there. He's like, you know what, Patrick, I've never told a lie in my life. And I was like, oh, really? <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> but who knows, maybe he was telling the truth. I don't know. He was telling a lie by telling you that. I know, that's a lie. <laughs> Only if it was a lie. Yeah. And that would have been too long. <laughs> oh. He just said, that's your first one. <laughs> Actually, it wouldn't be a It wouldn't be a <laughs> 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 Yeah, yeah it should have been, that's your second one. That's your second one. like, what? Yeah. Well, and that's the time I was like, I was like going through some issues with like lusting. Uh, this is at the, the church that I went through. And like, some uh, I I have a person see it. I was like, hey man, we went through this. I was like, so like, do you, do you ever have problems like lusting? He's like, oh no, never. Like, it's it's not even with me anymore. Oh, the other person said that. Yeah, the other person said that. I'm like, oh really? Like you know? How that <laughs> I can't really. Do you still have blood yeah. running in the veins? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yeah, you're a zombie. I don't. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you should have gone like this. Let me see. Oh. <laughs> 
So that was a very important um, yeah. point for this this whole chapter. But I mean, there are things we need to accommodate that, for others. And I mean, there are other things that we shouldn't do anyway, like fornicate. Well, right. That's what right, I was saying. That's that's what there were there definite things that were okay. set down in the Bible that we are not supposed to do. Yeah. So you can point to that if it's a, if it's one of the major things that they do. Okay. About. Okay. But many times, it's uh, if you're talking about a, a sin that's not addressed there, it's usually something that um, could be skewed as or as not a sin, say, watching particular R-rated movies. It could they be. didn't have R-rated movies in the Bible times. So right. You can kind of a judgment call. Exactly. A gray area. Depends what the movie is. Yeah. Things yeah. that could R-rated be different for one person. It's the Sopranos. Sopranos. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> that's a little, uh, now, now, if he would have, now, if he would have said, The Sopranos has a lot of sexual scenes in it, and that could lead to it, so I would be alright, maybe you don't need to do that. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like I'm going to turn them off. Right? Mm-hmm. Just close your eyes. I feel like you're going to be the Sopranos DVD. Yeah, close your eyes. Close your eyes, Steve. Don't worry about it. But jo- Jolie used to rail me hard about listening to rap music. She used to get on me. Why are you listening to that? Oh, yeah. I my life. Yeah, I don't think music has, I mean, I don't know. I don't think that music. I, don't, I listen to all kinds of music still, and like yeah. I, I never really like felt convicted about listening to music. Yeah, me neither. Like, I ever. didn't until I had kids like, in the car and they started singing the songs, and I'm like, "What are you singing?" <laughs> yeah, you don't want to like obviously like throw like a a, bad, a song with bad lyrics in front of kids. I mean, come on. For me, you can't listen to Mac Dre at a low level, and you can't listen to Mac Dre and the kids around in other cars. Yeah, right? no, so I, I mean, to cut that out. Yeah, I don't listen to Mac Dre anymore. <laughs> I still listen to like Dr. Dre, which is probably the best. <laughs> he's, do- he's a doctor. Yes. In moderation. Yeah, he's moderation. a doctor. Moderation. Yeah. You should listen to the oh doctor. I like Jay Z too. Got my mind on the line. Well, we already, <laughs> we already addressed. That's so prescribed. Jay Z, like all moderation, is absolutely not biblical right. at all. Yeah. Compton. If you're enjoying something, then enjoy it. Compton. Enjoy it yeah. as much as it should be enjoyed. Mm-hmm. Okay. Jesus is joining Mitchell Mission. <laughs> okay, so the, the second main point of this chapter, uh, the first was the humility that we need to uh, to accommodate other people and not to, to pass judgment on them for superficial things. Right. And really? the second point, the second purpose of this particular letter was to talk specifically about uh, the pastoral duties, so teaching what uh, what should you avoid when teaching, and what should you avoid in a teacher? So when you're looking for a church, you're looking at a church, what should and should not be done by those who are leading it? Mm-hmm. So, he says, you so you don't want someone saying, I, I've never told a lie before. Right? Up on stage? <laughs> I, think, uh, I would be skeptical. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'll I'd be like, have you really been living? If you have never told a lie, <laughs> yes. Or uh, that, or is that? Or very simple in other areas. You don't have a tongue. Like, Jesus, you're <laughs> risen again. Where that would make him the antichrist. What do you call? <laughs> no, just, what do you call that? A dump? Or you just don't believe that you told lies. The one that they can't speak. Or you don't think dump, you right? Uh, mute. Mute. Yeah. yeah. Tell him, tell him. <laughs> so I remember right. the first time my kid bites me. <laughs> Your kid? He was like two years old. Well, he didn't know anybody. Yeah, we had we had like a rabbit named Hoppers. <laughs> oh, that's and, cute. And he came and he did something and he blamed it on Hoppers and I saw him do it. <laughs> and he had like his bottle in his hand. And I'm all like, did you do that? And he's all, Hoppers did. He's <laughs> 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 just creative. And I was like, no way. <laughs> You didn't get that from me. That was all. You didn't get that from me. That wasn't for me though. <laughs> I always tell the truth. I never lie. So the first thing on, to avoid in teaching is uh, is the what he says the watering down of the faith. Mm. So those, the first he says uh, he goes to talk about the two churches that are nearest to this particular patient. He says that the first. Uh, has a, a pastor that has been so long engaged in watering down the faith to make it easier for a supposedly incredulous and hard-headed congregation 
that he now, it is now he who shocks his parishioners in his unbelief, not vice versa. He has undermined many a soul's Christianity. His conduct of the services is also admirable. In order to spare the laity of all difficulties, he has deserted both the lectionary and the appointed psalms, and now, without noticing it, revolves endlessly round the little treadmill of his 15 favorite songs and 20 favorite lessons. We are thus safe from the danger that any truth not at already familiar to him and to his flock should ever reach them through scripture. Mm. But perhaps your patient is not quite silly enough for this church, or not yet. <laughs> so the first church has been guilty of watering down the faith to revolve around the same ideas over and over, the same basic ideas that Jesus loves you. That That's a, um, something that I've come across commonly is that the, the church is constantly um, pounding the idea of Jesus loves you. And at a certain point, you need to move beyond that and talk about some of the, uh, the serious things of the Bible that it is God's judgment that? that is the necessity, that creates the necessity for the acts of love that Jesus mm -hmm. did. And that there, there are, this is a um, constant progression of knowledge that needs to occur in the life of the Christian, that any healthy believer is going to be moving forward <laughs> all the time. That Paul says that we're supposed to press forward to continue the race, he says. So that implies that there is something that is to be done and to be moving forward always. So we need to, to be wary of when we start to cycle through the same the emotions and the same, um, the same beliefs and the same doctrinal issues and addressing things over and over again rather than moving forward into difficult territory. How would you suggest somebody seeks truths unfamiliar to them? Well, first, um, it's, I would say that the first thing that they should do if they're looking for, for scriptural truth is just to read a passage that they have not read yet. So to look at things that you haven't already looked at, and if, that, if you've already done that and you've read the entire Bible, then to, to read a passage um, look for commentaries or look for different perspective on what you've already read to be moving forward and that, that's why we have these um, sorts of round table discussions mm. is that we're looking at things and from each other's perspective and through the the opinions and beliefs of other people we're able to take new truths and benefit ourselves and move forward so always be Always be in discussion with other believers, I would say, is one major thing, and the other is to always be reading new passages of Scripture. So you're always uh, exposed to new things by reading, and you're always exposed to new beliefs by speaking with other people. Mm -hmm. Excluding. Yes. These so, are other people. The second church <laughs> is that is in the in the range of this particular patient has the exact opposite problem. So he says, at the other church we have um, Friar Spike. The humans have often puzzled to understand the range of his opinions, why he is one day almost a communist and the next not far from some kind of theocratic fascism. One day a scholastic and the next prepared to deny human reason altogether. One day immersed in politics, and the day after declaring that all states in the world are equally under judgment. We, of course, see the connecting link, which is hatred. Mm -hmm. The man cannot bring himself to preach anything which is not calculated to shock, grieve, puzzle, or humiliate his parents and their friends. Mm -hmm. A sermon which such people could accept would be to him as an insipid, as a poem which they could scan. There is also a promising streak of dishonesty in him. We are teaching him to say the teaching of the church is when he really means, I am almost sure I read recently in Maharishian or someone of that sort. But I must warn you that he has one fatal defect he really believes, and this may yet mar all. Mm. So the second church has the opposite problem of the first. Rather than cycling through the things they already know, they are addressing things, they're talking about subjects that are designed to shock, grieve, or puzzle, or humiliate and things that are so aggressive and new and thing, uh, things that they 
that people are so unprepared to address that they're not able to benefit from them in any way. So the, the preacher is designing his sermons so that, um, not so that as the people listening could benefit from them, but rather to, um, as, it, as I said, to shock, grief, puzzle, or humiliate his parents. Iron brimstone. Right. So he has the opposite problem um, of the previous church because he's so um, so enwrapped in, in causing um, repentance or uh, strong reactions from his audience and not considering what they could actually learn from. So it shows that we need to have a balance between the two. We shouldn't always be concerned with what you already know, but we should also be wary of constantly addressing the new for the sake of addressing something new rather than for the sake of benefiting from it. So, and we also need to be careful of this, what he says is a connecting link between all these different opinions he seems to have, which is, which as he says is hatred. So he speaks not out of a love for what he, uh, for the people that he is speaking to, but rather for, um, the desire to uh, bring uh, hard reactions from them, which, as Jessica said, is um, a good example would be the fire and brimstone preachers that are constantly telling you that you are damned and going to hell. For many people, that is a new, a new thing, and it is very aggressive. And because of that, it may not be beneficial for many. And, um, and in that respect, you may need to move toward the first churches. Um, opinion of preaching that you need to start from what people know and then move on from that rather than starting with what they do not know and do not understand and are not capable of understanding. Yes, sir. Yes. So that's the end of 16. Both of the chapters were very short. Okay. Wow. That's like bringing all together. Well, you want to close in prayer since this is your last night? Oh, well. yeah. A few uh, prayer requests. Uh, Brianna asked if somebody could pray for her. Her uh, David's dad um, is going to be visiting him right now. Oh, yeah. At her apartment? At her apartment, yeah. He oh. was just in trouble or something, and now he's a. Been in there since then? Yeah. Now he's uh, a. Like January. So she's really has a lot of anxiety and she's really just trying to keep it together. She went over there with some. <laughs> what? Can I do that one, James? Or that. Baseball bats and shotgun. I got a pair of quests. I'm fuck up. Uh, I actually got two prayer requests. I got a friend, Maddie, she was having like really like extreme stomach pain and she had to go to the emergency room. I just pray that like her tummy feels better. Like, that's not good. That's not fun. And uh, oh yeah, I want to pray for my friend Mike and his marriage. It's like not doing too well right now, and the person that he's with, they're just not gelling right now, and they're fighting a lot. And I was actually with him on Sunday. That's why I didn't go to church because I want he, he needed someone to hang out with, and to kind of just take his mind off things, so to hang out with him. But they're both Christian, and they both go to church, so they have God in their life, so. That's Yay. good. But at the same time, you know, everyone goes through problems. So, yeah. It's going to be okay. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of work. That's it. Ready for that one, Joseph? Alright. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I told him that we should have been doing it. Super vague prayer request, and I apologize for it. But if you could just pray for Crossroads right now, um, and there's just there's just things happening, and I unfortunately am involved in parts of it, and it's uh, nothing that's affecting the big church, thankfully. But it's just it's just rough stuff, and people um, some people jumping the gun too much on things, and like, trying to be really proactive and preparing, but at the same time that they're forsaking people in the church and. 
trying to find that balance and figuring out what uh, what next steps should be. I'll figure it out. We will. I got, I'll pay for that one. Do you want to start? Chris? Uh, Lord, I have. Thank you for this time together tonight. We had to uh, read and we're going to together with this message and we're going to go into these cryptic letters. Thank you for uh, that time together as well. We look for the discussion. We watch your words tonight and work in our lives. And, uh, look at the situation uh, regarding uh, Brianna and David and the dad. I don't know him. Uh, I don't know what he do, but. You know what the situation is going to turn out, so I said we would continue more than that. Everything would go well, and you know, there's an anxiety that you would uh, you know, work on as you see fit. I ask for your hand, and then, you know, I ask for a you know, good report, and I don't know what to do with that. And then here we will be done. I you know, ask for peace and stability. I just want to thank you for today and thank you for uh, this group today and these wonderful people. I just want to pray for uh, Crossroads Church. It sounds like there's a little bit of turmoil going down and uh, that's never a good thing. Um, I just pray that uh, everyone that is kind of acting shady, Lord, they just take a step back and just you know, realize what they're doing and um, you know, realize that it's not the right thing to do, Lord. And I pray that you can just do your, uh, do your power to like infiltrate them and stop them from doing harm to people at the church. And I just pray that you can just bring everyone to peace and, um, and just that everyone can do this to along. Just need to pray. Lord, I ask for some physical help with Patrick's friend who has evidently been having some very serious stomach issues. I ask that you work with whatever she has so that you can repair whatever the issue is and that she'll be able to move forward with no hindrance. Also, I looked up Patrick's friend Mike. Um, I met him. Um, he's a real good guy. And, uh, I just pray that you uh, just give him solace and patience in his marriage. Um, as, as we all know, marriage is not a sprint, it's a marathon. There's ups and downs. And uh, not, not every day is a good day. Um, as much as you love that person, it, sometimes it's really hard. So I just ask that you help them um, in what appears to be their first real big crisis. Um, just remind them there's going to be many more down the road. And um, the commitment's there, and it was made in your name. And they're both faithful uh, followers of you. So I just ask that you, you just give them that understanding. And, uh, just give them that time to mend things and make things right so they can move on to the next the next big, uh, the big positive thing in their life. Um, Lord, uh, thank you for this night. Thank you for this uh, group. Thank you for this fellowship, this brotherhood, this family, Lord, for this church. Lord, we pray for each and every person here, especially the pastor and the elders and all the members, the leaders, and the volunteers, Lord. Um, Lord, pour your spirit upon us. Lord, in this church that, um, Lord, we know that all things that is happening and we're going through in our lives is just a part of the plan for you to edify us, to purify us. So in the in result of it, that we will be strengthened together, um, more unified, more in harmony. And so we can share that peace and love to the outside world and be lights to a, in a dark place. Mm -hmm. And and Lord, um, thank you, Lord. Uh, it's been a, it's been a, thank you, Lord, for uh, the blessings for this year, Lord. As I know this group, uh, I've seen it's been getting better and better, more fruitful and fruitful. And Lord, please continue that so we can draw others to Christ. And Lord, uh, although uh, people are leaving, for long term or short term, 
uh, draw us back together Lord, so we can you know, enjoy each other and friendship and fellowship. Uh, Lord, um, bless our time together and our times not together uh, when we meet uh, other people in our lives, Lord. Um, I know that I think it's time like strengthen us so we can strengthen others and it's time that uh, we go out um, uh, um, I'm going to school Lord uh, I didn't even plan to go to school but it was just meant to be and I, I, I met the, the director of that and he's really a nice guy he doesn't he's not out for money he's really out for uh, the um, the benefit of the student and the patients and I've never seen that I've never heard that before in healthcare setting because in my life in the healthcare setting uh, even my family my own family don't talk like that like they care for people but always care about money and job and it's not enough and but this man went went through a cancer and now he realizes the value of life and I thank you for Lord for setting me up to meet this guy in that school and it's only you God and I pray that, um, that uh, I don't know if he's a Christian, but um, I pray that someday I might share the gospel to him. Because mm -hmm. he's really a nice guy. Man. So he's thanking God for, for his life. And, and even though he's not earning a lot of money in that school, he's just, he just wants to help people. You know? And that's just amazing. And we thank, and we thank you, Lord. Uh, in Jesus' name, Lord. Um, Lord, uh, let this uh, group be fruitful first, and then we can multiply in Jesus' name.